Hey there guys, welcome to John Rips plays XCOM Enemy Within. This is the Long War mod, a free to download and amazing mod for the game. Vastly improves the game. And this is version beta 15E. And I don't have any drop frames yet. Let's uh let's go on these settings and see if this actually works. I'm gonna be playing Iron Man Impossible. None of the scripted council missions will just be getting random ones. Reducing beginner VO. I'm going to be playing with a few second wave options. There are a ton in Long War to choose from. I'm going to be playing with New Economy, which randomizes the funding from individual council members. I believe it always adds up to the same amount, so it just randomizes who gives you a lot and who gives you a little. And it makes the strategic game a little more interesting because you get to make more interesting decisions about which continent to get satellites over next, depending on who's uh, funding you the most. Also going to grab Hidden Potential. Now, a couple of things to say about this. Firstly, randomizing soldiers' level up stats pretty much makes your A team better and your like C and D team worse. Because your best soldiers happen to have the best stats, right? And your worst soldiers just rolled absolutely terrible stats. They're crap. Um, later in the game, when you get mechs, the fact that you can reroll bad soldiers and not reroll your good ones is a little bit weird and favorable for me. But the the main exciting reason that I'm bringing Hidden Potential is that it's going to give me soldiers who just sort of end up taking goofy progressions through the perk tree because, like, I don't think this guy is going to be an officer and then all of a sudden he gets, like, 27 will over the course of three levels and, like, he's my highest will soldier suddenly. Stuff like that. And then you have to deal with the perks that you take took at the start of their tree, ending up potentially being suboptimal based on the stats that they end up actually having. It just makes the tree more interesting. I usually play with training roulette as well, but i um, not going to this time. I think training roulette makes the game quite a lot more difficult, actually. I don't really need that. Commander's Choice is going to make things a little bit easier for me, and I just can't stand playing without Commander's Choice, honestly. It lets me choose what class a soldier promotes to. And I'm going to be bringing perfect information because this is something that you should just be able to look up. Anyway, there's uh, no reason you shouldn't be getting this information about how easy it is for aliens to hit you, etc. When you could sit down with a calculator and a spreadsheet and work it all out on your own time. I'd just rather the game did it for me. Going to be starting in the United States. The reason for this is that here are my satellites, here or <laughs> here are my interceptors, and the satellite coverage is here. So it's easy to get two interceptors to the scouts that I'm going to be trying to shoot down in March. And whether or not you get through March well is a huge deal. I definitely recommend taking starting bonuses and starting countries, which help you get through March and April well. Um, that just snowballs so hard into the rest of the game. Gonna be taking. We're going to be putting down. We'll talk Mexico more about the bonus mission. later. We've picked up a local broadcast indicating alien activity within a major metropolitan area. We should get down there and eliminate any hostiles. Supposedly, we're still at zero dropped frames. I'm a fan of that. Okay, so Operation Red Fear. Bradford has. Uh, Put you in on the details. We have a fun little map here. Strike one. This is central. You are free to engage all so hostile contacts back. in the AO. Don't take any chances. This is usually a council mission map, I believe. It's been a long time since I played the base game, so I'm starting to forget uh, where maps are from, sort of. But it can spawn meld canisters. Doesn't look like it has. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I just see one? Ah, there's one right at the end of the map. So there's some incentive to clear the mission quickly here. But yeah, basically how this map works is we have a big building here, nice heavy cover, ability to conceal, big open space here, some like lines of crates here, which you can walk through, big open space here, another building some crates over here. So you have two open spaces and some concealment. I think it's a fairly straightforward map. Uh, there aren't that okay. many 
different ways you could play it. Got it. So I'm just going to be Let's do this. moving into this building quite rapidly. Like I said, there's meld out there. Um, I can scan these squares to make sure that there's no contact on them. Okay. And just go ahead and... Whoa, that guy was having Copy trouble that. kicking the door down. Moving. That's unusual. Usually XCOM are great door kickers. Dosser. And yeah, move in here. Move. That's a large benefit of concealment. A very large, greedy first turn move there. Made quite safely because of the map situation. And surprisingly, we have some sectoids out on the map. Only possible enemies here are sectoids and drones. Now, I'm going to rearrange my soldiers aye, aye, before commander. actually opening the store. I'd quite like... I have a turn to sort of goof around hey here. There now. Like somebody to be able to move out here. I want my HE grenade fairly close up front because I may walk forward out the door and chuck it. I want seven hit point soldiers on the door itself. Moving out. Let's pick the ones with the highest will here. Oh, 68. Roger that. And seven hit points perfect. Oh boy. You guys just missed out on a good sneeze. And we're going to be steadying aim with the soldiers who can't just stand and shoot next turn. While overwatching with the other guys, because aliens could walk in that door, it's possible. If they do, it will be very good for us right now. There's something out okay. there. So it looks like the contact is fairly distant here. As... Uh, we heard it in this direction. We can scan these tiles and see that they're clear. No contact right there. And there's a, a big pit here where there can be no contact. So probably we're talking about contact over here or something. Maybe even further. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try Moving to pull the contact with Suguru here. here. Perfect. Now the sectoids move to fairly intelligent positions. The only guy who's really caught out is this guy. Um, I have two choices here. I can move forward aggressively and kill as many as possible. Or I can fall back, move into concealment, and expect them to move to worse positions next turn. I do have one HE grenade. That means that I have three uncovered sectoids here. I have this guy who's flankable, and I have these two whose cover I can destroy with an HE grenade. Leaving me just one sectoid to deal with. He's too far away to like walk forward and AP grenade him. Hmm. He's pretty killable. I think the big question here is whether this pulls contact. And if it does, uh, I think Neuron 13 mobility. 14 mobility, okay, I think Bader here would be quick enough to get back inside to here, which would be concealed from sectoids. I want to be able to move to this square. Although he has an assault carbine, which is unlikely to... to well, it's not unlikely, but it's possible that it wouldn't kill a second in flank. Okay. Knowing that this square is free for my soldiers to use, I can now just start mowing down sectoids. Good riddance. With you guys. We're at minimal risk here. Obviously, there's a slight risk that even with six shots, I don't manage to kill these two exposed guys. We do have rookies that we're dealing with here. I can use an AP grenade if things go horribly wrong. Adjusting sights. Probably I will end up doing that if things are going poorly. The 
the really scary thing though is that this guy out. hidden behind low cover back there gets to take a shot back at us. Um, oh dear. Adjusting sights. Friends, what have you done? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and plan to finish those guys off with an AP grenade. I'm going to put Heading Raul out. into this cover. Like I said, it's very scary that there's a sectoid out there who's going to get a shot back at us. Uh, especially with a 5 hit point soldier in light cover and Raul here with 4 hit points in heavy. These guys may not die. I just got extremely, extremely unfortunate. Holy shit, I have actually never, ever seen luck that poor in my life. That's... What just happened was very, very bad for me. And it's left me in a very scary place. Now the sectoids can roll bad too, but I may end up with dead soldiers here. Even if I don't end up with dead soldiers, I may end up in a bad place. Okay. Ooh, they're being assholes. Okay, we have a critically wounded soldier in panic. We're actually panic chaining. Okay, we passed one panic check. So. Welcome to uh, XCOM, Enemy Within Long War Beta 15E. I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this campaign. We really made some good inroads against the aliens. And I will uh, be seeing you next time for my next attempt at beating the game. <laughs>